this is an animal that will lull you into um, a position sometimes you're you're making you stupid it's super fast Bittus is the most ridiculously fast strike and obviously it's got serious equipment so I'm gonna take this defrosted rat I love rats don't forget okay here we go she's gonna get a little excited come over here Everybody have a good shot here so hold on, get okay ready whoa you lost that. Was what? That was very fast. Isn't that ridiculous? So right now, she's in the venomating. I bet these guys eat a lot of birds because one thing they do, they'll some snakes will bite something and then retract and then wait for you know the the poor animal to perish. These guys like to hang on to them, and a lot of times that's a good indicator with like timber rattlesnakes. They can discern if they've just bit a robin, and they'll actually hang on to it as opposed to it being released and then flying away to die uselessly in the forest. I'm just enamored because this animal is smart enough to know that I'm not gonna hurt it. I'm watching her eyes, her eyes moving around and she's just like, yeah, daddy, you're just, you're just whatever. But look at that big fang, look at that fang. Donnie, look at that. Right here, over here. Oh, I didn't see this fang. Yeah. Look at that. So everybody, this is a fang sheath. So there's a big recurved fang. That's a, that's over an inch fang. And she's allowing you with all of your autofocus, the infrared that's blasting her eyes, she can see that. And she's still tolerating this, tolerating me talking because she can hear. And uh, she's still so trusting that none of this is actually causing her to uh, release the rodent and then go and hide and become defensive. Her brain is thinking. She's just like, okay, just get it over with. And as soon as we stop moving around and we get distracted, she'll probably start eating. We can feed something else though. Let's see, she might want to eat. Do you want to eat? There we go. So she'll, what she's going to do is she's going to hang on to everything she can. She's hanging on the table. Look at that. Smart. <laughs> okay, here you go. Interested. What drink of the water? <laughs> I can't see anything. <laughs> Gentle. Look at that. I keep a lot of reptiles, so obviously these are predators, so they're eating rodents in most cases. Uh, the one thing, if you ever ask me, what is it that you do not like about keeping reptiles? They eat rodents. From the outside looking in, many people would consider, well, we like to do this because we watch, like to watch little animals get eaten or something like that. None of that is remotely true of myself, and I know a whole bunch of other keepers, you know, people that keep chameleons. They don't keep chameleons because they want to watch chameleons eat crickets. And uh, but we really have to be aware of that. This is part of it, but I'm always asking people, think a little bit humanely, think about people that keep rats, that keep rodents and furry creatures, and when we're displaying how we feed our animals, keep that in mind because it's a great way to be uh, demonized, vilified, all that different stuff. There are some tricks when you're actually using uh, to frosted rodents. I get tons of frozen rodents from Rodent Pro. Make sure at the end of the video you notice that we have a coupon code every single month. I take my Rodent Pro discount and I give it to all of you. And uh, Rodent Pro is just awesome, super super good quality, and they're literally the industry standard that we uh, that we deal with. When you're using frozen rodents, remember one thing. This animal's an ectotherm. It relies on getting its heat from some other place. So when you offer a rodent, even if it's defrosted, but it's cool, if it's room temperature, you're not activating some of the instinctual keys that would actually cause this animal to think, okay, this is a suitable uh, food source. I'm gonna actually eat this instead of waiting for something to crawl around in my cage. Uh, there's a couple of benefits. When you're feeding defrosted rodents, the frozen rodents have already been through a freeze cycle and there's uh, cellular destruction. So when you've defrosted it, this is an easier meal to digest than a normal, you know, living rodent. So right off the bat, it's easier to digest. Secondly, they're fed 
a ridiculous <laughs> good diet. Rodent Pro stuff is all like probably eating a Purina 3000, a Missouri diet, all these different good diets that are gonna take all the vitamins and all the, the good nutrients and pass it on to your animal. And an wow. So this animal is feeling very, um, feeling very vulnerable. So they start flopping around and doing this. This is, this animal's trying to get a position. <laughs> Big wet rodent, yeah, that's great. I'm just gonna keep doing this. There you go, I know, it, this rodent is fighting back. Okay, that might work. Do you so, think that's what you think? Do you think sometimes that's what I, they think? I don't really know, but it's uh, he's just hanging on to it. So getting good quality rodents, making sure they're warm. So other tricks, you can take and put it in a Ziploc bag, put it in hot water, make sure the water is not scathing hot because actually it'll start to cook the rodent and that's not always so great. A uh, couple other tricks, let's say you got a snake that likes to eat birds, like chickens. And what you can do is you can defrost, let's say I'm defrosting mice, and I could put a chick or a couple chicks in the same water and uh, use that to feed them. Another little trick, say if something that's like, let's say a, a green tree python that really might want to eat birds and it's your new animal, you're having a hard time getting to eat. Well, if you get a frozen defrosted chick and you're defrosting mice, make sure that they're hot. These, these, a lot of these arboreal species really like their rodents really hot to initiate, you're just ridiculous. I don't know why he's doing all this. He's ruining the video, yeah, what he's doing. He's just... God. Now your rodent's cold. There you go. He's struggling with it. So, you want... So there's lots of things to navigate. So you want to make sure it's warm. But then what you do, you take the chick, you cut open his belly where the yolk is, and you can actually take that yolk, rub it on your mouth, and a lot of times that will cause a like a reflex feed or something that's excited to eat birds and it'll still grab your rodent. Another trick, let's say you have an animal that's a difficult feeder and you want to initiate uh, feeding uh, hunting. So what you can do, let's say, let's say it's a ball python. So naturally they want to hunt at night. So what you can do, you can take some little bit of dirty rodent shavings and sprinkle it in the cage just to get the animal going. And then when the lights are off for an hour or two, then you can introduce whatever the food item is. There's all these little tricks. Let's say I have a jungle carter python, only wants to eat mice, but I have a rat. What I can do is I can take some of the um, used sh uh, shavings, the bedding from the mouse, and I can heat the rat up in this Ziploc bag in hot water, but it's still dry in there, and put some mouse bedding on there. And what I'm doing is I'm passing the smell and the scent of the mice onto that rat so I can get my jungle carpet to eat a larger meal. There's all sorts of different tricks. There's one thing you might notice in some of the feeding where we're feeding some of the bolins. One thing you can take your rodent, and if you get one that's just like persnicky, always whatever, the lip, the lip line, if you put the nose right in there and you kind of do this, and what I do is I'll tickle the body, so I put the nose of the mouse or the rat right in between the lips, and then I rub the body, and a lot of times that'll cause a reflex feed, and they'll grab it. So let's say I'm feeding Amazon tree boas. Amazon tree boas are classic. They're gonna get, they're very reactive to a heated up rodent, defrosted rodent, and I get it to grab it and it coils around it. And then I'm feeding a couple, very quickly I started noticing they're all dropping all the rodents because they're responding to movement. So if you're going around like I am, moving around your hands, I'm so animated, and you're doing that, and the animal's a non-trusting animal, obviously Amazon tree boas are really reactive, they're very nervous. They're very unsure of what your intent is. So a lot of times what they're gonna do is they're gonna drop the rodent because they're nervous and uh, with their mouth full, they're not gonna do a very good job protecting themselves and being aware of you. So a lot of times they'll just uh, bail on the rodent and then start looking at you and you can offer them food and they'll do it again and again. But you wanna be aware of that. A lot of activity, not good. Uh, obviously, you know, if you have a problematic feeder and you actually do get it to grab, usually, removing yourself from the situation is a good idea. Snakes are eating. They are vulnerable. And that means they, if they are uncertain, unsure of their surroundings, they might be unwilling to eat. I'll let that one go. In front of you? Mm -hmm. And uh, so if they're worried and they don't have trust for you or trust for their environment, they often will drop their food or fail to even try to eat because they're too worried because their mouth is busy and they're focused on their meal 
So animals that are in a nervous situation that are worried or uncomfortable will often fail to eat. There you go. Let's see if I can get you to come with. Okay, so see what that? That's envenomated and everything. That was it. So this animal strikes, envenomates, and waits for uh, the, the animal to succumb to the venom. And this way, it doesn't have to deal with anything wrestling or anything like that. Donnie, look above you. There you go. Good Jen had some fun. God, they're voracious. Oh yeah, they're wonderful. God, that's amazing. It's a Suriname tree toad. Believe it or not, that toad spends a huge amount of its life up in the trees. They can climb right up trees. Wow. But I appreciate you guys. Thank you for following us. Hopefully, every time uh, I yak away and bore everybody, you guys are at least going to learn a little bit. And even uh, feeding to frosted rodents, there's a lot to it. But remember, if you ever are doing live feeding, be empathetic. The animal, the little mouse or the rat, didn't do anything to get itself in that position. I know it's a circle of life. Obviously, we're human predators. We do horrible things, but have a heart. I gotta turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on! <laughs>